Hello. Welcome back to Awful Archaeology. This is my second time filming this because iPhones suck. Spent 45 minutes filming this entire video this morning and then the file corrupted. So if I seem extra exasperated in this video, that is why. I didn't even turn on my ring light. Oh yeah, ow. Anyway, welcome back to Awful Archaeology, the show where I spin this gigantic wheel, which is completely covered in archaeological-based conspiracy theories, and I talk about whatever it lands on so that you can hopefully learn something to impress your friends and family with, and you also gain sadistic pleasure from watching me completely destroy my mental health. As you already have probably had spoiled for you by the title and the fact that I said what I was going to do at the end of last video, today we are going to be talking about the Orinetius Phineas map, as has been decreed by the Wheel of Perpetual Torment. But what kind of video would it be if I didn't give you a- Old maps suck. They frequently show inconsistencies from modern maps that are derived from errors that occur when you try and map an entire planet using a pencil. Many of the times, these errors are just cause for a good laugh, if nothing else. Like this map, which shows California as an island, which is wrong. Or this map, which shows the non-existent Appalachian Lake. How you accidentally find an entire lake that doesn't exist I could not tell you. Or this map, which shows the Zambezi River as a circle, which is more akin to a theme park ride than an actual river. Many of the errors on these antique maps are about as credible as this, which I created when I was 10 years old. And it has such features as a town called Foot and a city called Yahoo? Bone Desert. The map key is pretty great. Not only is key spelled wrong, but the different types of states are old state, new state, war state, cool state, and stupid state. I also named the ocean the wet sea. <laughs> I was a fucking weird kid. And now I'm a weird adult. Funny how that happens. New merch idea. This map on a wall poster. Drop a comment if you'd buy that. If you say you wouldn't buy it, I know you're a damn liar because this is awesome. And of course, more maps than you can count with islands that either don't exist or are on the map twice or three times or hell, even four times. With the advent of modern satellite technology, arguing that any of these errors are founded in reality is an egregious claim at best. However, However, conspiracy theorists today will continue to cite these outdated and erroneous maps to perpetuate the existence of everything from ice-free poles to entirely lost continents. This particular map has been cited by pseudo-archaeologists like Graham Hancock and the other guy whose name I forget because I'm not looking at my script, Graham Hancock and Charles Hapgood, to argue that the South Pole had not only been known about and mapped for hundreds if not thousands of years longer than we've been taught, but also that at some point within this time span, it was ice-free. I don't know why I said that like that. That was disturbing. It was ice-free. In the case of Hapgood, this manifested in him coming up with his cataclysmic pole shift hypothesis, which frankly, I don't want to know anything about Charles Hapgood's pole or why it shifts. And recently, this map has been used by my favorite demographic of people, pseudo-archaeological climate change deniers. And they use this map to claim that because it shows Antarctica with no ice on it, that anthropogenic climate change must not be real. This demographic of people can easily be identified. Not only do they use this map to argue argue that anthropogenic climate change isn't real, but each and every one of them has an easily identifiable band of wool pulled over their eyes and their heads shoved firmly up their ass. But in order to understand these outlandish claims, we must have a look at the Orinetius Phineas map, which was a map that was created by Orange Finet was born in 1494 to a French family who lived in France. Orange Fine. I don't know why I did the, I had the, the Italian hand gesture carried over a little bit. Orange Fine. <laughs> Fuck me. He was born to a multi-generational family of doctors and physicians. He obtained a college education and a degree in medicine, and much of his later years was spent in academic writing, primarily concerning things like math, and other boring stuff. But he did have a particular interest in astronomy, to the point where he was actually arrested for teaching judicial astronomy. He would even go on to publish an astronomy textbook entitled On Heavenly Spheres. It is unclear whether or not this name came from him studying celestial bodies or from a failed pickup line attempt at his local bar. Hello baby, my name is Orange Finet. I wrote this book, but I would like to see your heavenly spheres. And just like that, I have alienated all three of my French viewers. But undoubtedly, the greatest lasting legacy of Finet are his maps. Living at the intersection where the old world and the new world met, Fine quite literally saw the blank edges of the map being filled in. And in 1531, he would go on to produce this, the Cart of Ornitius Phineas. 
which for those of you wondering is the Latinized version of his name. Why he did this? He was incredibly pretentious. Sorry, I mean French. This map, like many other Atlas style maps of the time, was created by combining the works of multiple different cartographers to create what can only be described as a masterpiece. By using this process, it was possible for the map maker to create not only a larger span of the world, but also iron out inconsistencies that may have carried over in a handful of the maps. It was pretty much peer reviewing the maps and using the scientific process to get rid of inconsistencies. And while this process could result in more accurate maps, it was also possible that this process could result in some pretty enormous errors. And in the case of this map, an error manifested itself in the form of a heavily debated mysterious continent known as... At first glance, this map appears to show what is a fairly believable map of Antarctica. The general shape looks correct to the layman, and the position of the latitudinal lines even depict it as being on the bottom of the planet. Pseudoscientists who read into it more go on to validate these claims even further, claiming that features such as the Ross and Weddell Seas, Maudland and Mary Bird Land are not only present, but shown at their correct longitude. So why don't we have a little look at what some of these conspiracy theorists have to say? You like the fact that my phone is plugged in right now? I'm like a giant extension cord with legs. Let's have a look at this one from the Daily Journalist. The Orinetius Phineas Map, Antarctica, Ice Free. Here is a summary of some of the most unusual findings about the map. Scrutiny of the map shows that the makers knew the accurate circumference of the Earth to within 50 miles. The coastline and islands that are shown in Antarctica must have been navigated at some point prior to 4000 BC. Oh, he goes on to talk about the Perry Reese map, which is weird. That's also on the Wheel of Pain, but I haven't gotten to it yet. In 1959, in the Library of Congress, Hapgood noticed a presumably authentic map that instantly wiped out his doubt. Even to the most skeptical, the Orinetius Phineas map is startling. Boo! Although it was printed to a book in 1531, and was thus not subject to subsequent amendment, it is remarkably similar to today's maps of Antarctica. Is it though? Admittedly, it is too close to the tip of South America, and it's incorrectly oriented. <laughs> Yet the proportions seem similar. <laughs> the coastal mountains found in the 1957 geophysical study are in roughly the right places, and so are many great bays and rivers. Furthermore, the shape of South America seems right, and the close resemblance between the modern, scientifically exact maps of the Ross Sea and Phineas's unnamed gulf is striking. Hapgood's work cannot simply be lumped with the lunatic fringe, Although, unqu <laughs> Although unquestionably an amateur theoretician, he did do his homework and had it thoroughly checked by professionals. The US Air Force SAC cartographers, for example, worked with him for two years and fully endorsed his conclusions about Antarctica. Ah yes, because there is no one I trust more than the US government. Let's have a look at some modern climate change deniers and what they have to say about this map. Ah, here we are. Explorer's Web. Ancient Antarctic map challenges man-made global warming theory. This really is gonna be the death of me. An ancient map that was drawn in 1531 by French cartographer Orinetius Phineas shows the globe from the perspective of the South Pole and the North Pole. Bolded, theory of man-made global warming. In an article written by Professor Alan Quist of Minnesota, he said that the ancient map of the globe drawn by Ornitius Phineas disproves the theory of man-made global warming. For those of you wondering who Alan Quist is, just did a quick little search here, Alan Quist is a Minnesota politician, a former state representative, and two-time candidate for governor of the state. But he has suggested that dinosaurs lived alongside humans as recently as the 12th century, and he believes that abortion should be a first-degree homicide. Quist campaigned against the advent of same-sex marriage in Minnesota. He led efforts against extending human rights protections to gays and lesbians and supported former Evener, Evener, Governor Ar Arnie Carlson. Quist also led the sponsorship of a failed bill to require AIDS testing for all marriage license applicants. Quist has drawn criticism from a past statement he made suggesting that supporting a gay counseling center at the Minnesota State University would be similar to supporting one for the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> and saying that, quote, its presence suggests university approval for the homosexual lifestyle and the practice of sodomy. <laughs> you wouldn't have a center for the KKK. And that quote, oh my god, I, 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 I don't even want a soundbite of myself saying this out loud. So to make very clear, I'm quoting Alan Quist on this one. And the quote, both would be breeding grounds for evil 
AIDS in this case. <laughs> so just to go back to our initial point, in this article written by Professor Alan Quist of Minnesota, he said this ancient map of the globe drawn by Oranesius Phineas disproves the theory of man-made climate change. I thought you just needed a little bit of background on who this guy is so you know how credible he is. Holy fuck. God. This got my blood pressure going. The enormous significance of the map has now become apparent as Congress considers sweeping legislation intended to combat global warming, supposedly caused by human activity. Since Antarctica was much warmer when some of the source maps were drawn than it is today, the theory that man-made carbon dioxide emissions are the primary cause of climate change must be given up. I don't really follow that. If it didn't have ice before, and it has ice now, and the ice is receding, wouldn't that still be proof of climate change? I don't understand what this means. Maybe they'll go on to explain it. America's shown to be flowing rivers. Uh, it's extraordinarily accurate, and we'll get into that in a minute. So much so that modern cartographers are mystified as to how it could have been drawn with such amazing accuracy. I'm gonna be using that sound bite again, I can promise you that. And again, it shows the land with no ice and accurate topography, which was only mapped in 1958 when the first seismic survey was done. Oh. They don't go on to explain how this debunks climate change. Who would have thought that these people had no idea what they're talking about? Okay, let's get back on track here now that we know the kinds of people that we're arguing with. Now the general gist of these claims seems fairly convincing on paper and to those of us who don't have a map of Antarctica memorized. But under a more critical lens, these claims fall apart faster than a crunchy nature valley bar in the hands of a ravenous toddler. These particular claims, which were perpetuated by Hapgood, were analyzed further by Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews. Fitzpatrick Matthews found that in order to reach the same conclusion that Hapgood had, one would have to jump to an inconceivable amount of conclusions, including, comedically, editing the map. Here's a little list of all the things Hapgood would have to manipulate in order to prove that his claim was real. He would have to rotate Terra Australis by 20 degrees, which is a lot. He would have to move the South Pole by seven and a half degrees or 1600 kilometers. He would also have to scale down the entire continent by 230%, which for those among me who are terrible at math means that this continent is more than twice the size of the South Pole. He would also have to reshuffle enormous chunks of the coastline. And he overlooked the complete negation of the Antarctic Peninsula, which is like the most recognizable part of Antarctica. And if they had mapped all the way up to South America, they probably would have mapped this part too, despite showing mainland South America touching the continent. Such amazing accuracy. What Hapgood did to come to this conclusion is similar to being presented with a Rorschach test, being asked to describe what you see, and then just flipping it over and just drawing whatever you want on the back. When taking all of this into account, it is clear that this map does not depict Antarctica nearly as clearly as conspiracy theorists would like you to believe. So now that we know what Terra Australis isn't, let's talk about Firstly, let's have a look at one of the most prominent features of Antarctica, the Antarctic Peninsula. Or rather, let's not have a look at it, because it's not there. Either way, this is where it should be. Hapgood claims that the reason that this feature is not there is because Fina ran out of room, and so he just omitted the entire peninsula to make room for South America. Now, map makers at the time weren't exactly in the business of just deleting entire discoveries, which is why sometimes there will be maps that I've mentioned earlier where you will get the same island or the same feature mapped out multiple times in different places. So allow me to propose another explanation. Yeah, this is the fun part. I was looking forward to this. Let's go. We know that South America and Antarctica are about 650 miles apart, which is clearly not depicted here, which leads me to believe that what you are looking at here is not the coastline of Antarctica, but the northern coast of Terra del Fuego. The gap between Terra del Fuego and mainland South America is not the 600 miles that you would expect to see between South America and Antarctica. It is instead the 20 mile wide Strait of Magellan, which would seem a lot more more accurate to what we're looking at on this map. Not to mention the fact that the coastline lines up with the shape of the top of Terra del Fuego fairly accurately. At this time, explorers had been up and down the coast of South America and it had been mapped fairly decently, but there were still some parts that hadn't been fully filled in yet. And it is very likely that the maps that Fine was pulling from did not have an accurate map of Terra del Fuego and instead just showed the coastline that they had seen from the mainland or from the Strait of Magellan. Now, if we move to the Northeast, we can see the Horn of South Africa as well as the island of Madagascar, both of which are in a fairly 
fairly appropriate relation to one another, both in shape, size, and distance across the Mozambique Channel. But the observant of you have noticed a second island on this map, which sort of throws the train of continuity off the tracks. A small heart-shaped island off the southeast coast of Madagascar, which is labeled Zanzibar, though this is clearly an error, as the island of Zanzibar is nearly 800 miles to the northwest of Madagascar, and separated from mainland Tanzania by only 25 miles across the Zanzibar Channel. Perhaps this is a mislabeling of the islands of Reunion or Mauritius, or even a mislabeling of the French Southern Antarctic Islands. But due to the fact that Zanzibar was fairly well known about at this point, I would imagine that this is just an error in placing the tiny island. And imagine here the concern was just including the right locations and less concerned about placing them in relation to this unknown continent. In fact, I think that this portion of Terra Australis was almost entirely inferred and never actually mapped, because it's pretty much just a straight line with no discernible features. Kind of just like procedural terrain generation. And now for the final piece of evidence before I hit the grand slam and blow your mind. If you direct your eyes to the top of the map, you will see a scattering of islands. Thankfully for us, these islands are labeled. We can clearly see not only the islands of Java, but also the island of Timur. And what is directly south of the islands of Java and Timur? Australia! This part of the map is, almost without a doubt, the northern coast of Australia, depicting the Carpentaria Gulf. In fact, this map even includes the two islands that are in the Gulf, with Mornington Island in the south and Groot Island in the northwest. Put all your I am Groot jokes in the comments with everyone else, you filthy animal. The Long Peninsula, which myself, as well as many of you, may have thought was supposed to be the Antarctic Peninsula, and is here labeled as Regio Petalis, is actually the Cape York Peninsula. So why is this continent 230% larger than Antarctica? And why does it come so close to South Africa? And why is the South Pole shown as being right in the center of it? Because, you ready for this? Because this map shows a gigantic inference stretching 8,000 miles under the bottom of the planet from Australia to Argentina and entirely encircling Antarctica. Boom. Thank you, thank you, I'm here all week. There is not a single piece of this conspiracy which cannot be explained with this explanation. Why is it shown as being ice-free? Because the parts of land that they could see it didn't have ice on them. Why are the rest of the distances on the map so accurate? Because it was a really accurately done map, they just inferred a huge portion of it. How do they manage to mess up where Zanzibar is? Because the person who made it was French. It's important to look at conspiracies like this with some scrutiny. I mean, it's important to look at any conspiracy with some scrutiny, but if someone is trying to tell you that a map from 500 years ago can tell you more than we know today with modern science, they are completely and utterly full of shit. Before I let you go, let's have a look as to what next episode is gonna be on. Spin that wheel, big, uh, big papa. Nice. I'm spinning this wheel in post, so I actually have no idea what my next video is gonna be on. If you guys like this episode, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be aware when the next video comes out. With these videos, I try to do live premieres so I can be there with you guys and we can all watch the video for the first time together. So if you did watch the premiere of this video, thank you, it was wonderful having you. And if that's something you'd be interested in in the future, I look forward to seeing you next time. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. My patrons get early ad-free access to my videos, and in the future, they're gonna be getting blooper reels as well because I mess up a lot when I make these videos. If you are one of my patrons, your names will be in the credits at the end, so make sure to stick around for that one. And remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, remember that the next time you do something terrible and think you're gonna burn in hell forever, at least you're not Alan Quist.